Welcome to the Young Filmmakers Project. I'm Tara Cox. We're here at Skyview High School where students in Ms. Wistrand's video production classes are hard at work. Every high school and most middle schools have video production programs where students learn how to shoot and edit video, write scripts, build graphics, and do live shows. While they do all that, they're also building teamwork skills like communication, problem solving, and more. These programs are part of the district's career and technical education program. Our first film comes from a student here at Skyview who is interested in journalism as a career. She made a documentary about Skyview's unusual library and the teacher librarian who keeps it running. The library, a place that must be as silent as the void of space itself, a place where the tiniest little cough can get you a scolding of a silent librarian. But Skyview High School's book room is a little different. This is the one librarian that openly calls her library a library, and her name is Miss Chun. So my job at the Skyview Library is different every day, and I think that's one of the benefits of working here. Um, some days I'm doing iPad repair and checking in and out iPads. Some days I'm checking in and out library books for students that are reading for um, enjoyment or for reading for a particular class. Uh, some days I'm checking in and out textbooks. Other days I actually get to go into the classroom and do instruction, um, whether it's about research or um, a particular um, unit or project that students are doing or using technology in the classroom. Uh, I get to do a wide variety of things and I love that every day is different. I also love that every day I get to um, interact with a different group of students. Um, it's different than working in a public library in that the public library, um, it doesn't have the instruction or the technology piece that um, we do have here at school. <clears throat> so in a public library, you're dealing more with public um, in terms of just reading for enjoyment or um, because they need a particular question answered or they need information. Um, and so that's just one part of my job here where at the public library that would uh, be the entire job. So here at Skyview I get to do lots of other things um, that are a lot of fun. Now we have a little insight on what her role is as the librarian. But she isn't just your stereotypical strict librarian, she's quite the opposite. In fact, she widely encourages every student to call her library the library. So we like to call the Skyview Library the library uh, because we are not a traditional library where you have the shushing librarian uh, and we're telling students to be quiet. So for me, if the library is uh, really quiet, it lets me know that students aren't in here and it's not being used. And I really want the library to be a vibrant space where students are in here collaborating, using the space, um, talking, um, solving problems together, you know, not only does it need to be a space where kids can come and get books and get information, but also a place where students can come and, and work together and, and learn together and problem solve. And so I like to refer to it as a loud library because when it's loud in here, I know that the space is being used. Miss Tracy Chun doesn't just deal with books, she is also tasked with the job of dealing with the iPads. This is the first year the iPads were introduced to Skyview High School. But how does a librarian oversee how the iPads function within the school? So when the iPads were introduced, um, actually last fall we started a pilot. Um, my job changed a little bit, but then this year when the iPads were rolled out to the entire student body, I would say that my job changed um, quite a bit, in a good way. Overall my job has changed in that students um, come in um, with specific needs that they didn't come in with last year. So they may come in with a technical question. Um, they also come in with questions regarding um, particular apps or projects. So, for example, last year students would come in and they would ask for my help on a computer. So they would ask help for formatting an assignment or um, finding a research site. Um, so students are still coming in and asking those questions, but instead of asking them um, on the computer, they're asking them with their device in their hand. So we know her role as a librarian, and we know how her job has changed since the addition of iPads, but she said earlier that this was only one of the few of her many jobs at Skyview. Ms. Chun has had the opportunity to take on a junior and senior AVID class this year too, which she teaches in her own library. Uh, so this year I had the opportunity to teach the AVID 1112 elective class. And how that uh, came about was this summer we had some staff changes. Um, we had a staff member leave the building um, and we had another staff member take on a different role. And so I actually campaigned um, pretty ruthlessly for the position um, to teach the AVID 1112 class. So um, 
a little bit of background, I have been the AVID coordinator now for two years, and so I am very familiar with the AVID program, and I've been to a lot of AVID trainings, um, and so I kind of really believe in the philosophy of AVID. Um, one component of that is building a relationships, building relationships and building a family with um, a class of students. And so when we determined that the grade 11, 12 class was going to be combined, um, already it was kind of a concern about trying to get those two families to merge and have those students come together as one class. And then when we found out that, that those two classes were also going to have to have a new teacher, um, for me as the AVID coordinator and also as someone who knew the students and was familiar with the students in the class, I really wanted them to have a teacher that was familiar to them. So I didn't want to um, have either a new teacher to our building. Um, for example, we have uh, several new teachers who are AVID trained um, but had never been to Skyview High School. Um, I didn't want to put them in that position and then I also didn't want to put them in a position where they had a teacher that they've known forever but doesn't know anything about AVID. Um, and so I just, um, I asked um, Mrs. Davis, I pretty much begged her all summer if I could teach the class and then I went to Mr. Gray and asked Mr. Gray and luckily they said that I could um, teach the class. And so um, it's, been, it's been a challenging and learning year for me because I've been out of the classroom for so long. Um, things like taking attendance and doing a grade book um, were foreign at first, um, but it has been the highlight of my year. So it's kind of my grounding point every day. Um, it reminds me why I'm in a school to begin with and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, I'm really, really fortunate to be able to teach that class this year. So that is just a glance what inside Skyview Library looks like. Ms. Chun would like to encourage all students to come in and visit the library during lunch as they need a study place or an iPad assistance. Here with Lexi. Lexi, tell me a little bit about your project. Where did you come up with your topic? Well, I wanted to do a project about Ms. Chun, our librarian, because one, I'm in her class, which most librarians don't have a class. So her classroom is actually in her library, and the class that she teaches is AVID. Mm -hmm. And not only does, did she take on a class this year, but the, with the introduction of the iPad, she's also in charge of that. So I wanted to kind of tell the school of all the things that she's doing because she's probably one of the busiest faculty members of Skyview. What did you learn about the library in Ms. Chun's position um, when you were interviewing and, and putting that story together? Well, I learned that not only is she an AVID teacher for the juniors and seniors, but she's also the AVID coordinator. So she's always going to meetings and everything while also being a librarian. Um, and with the iPads, Basically, she's the person the students or even faculty go to if they ever have a problem with their iPads. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about uh, the difficulty in putting together your shots and your story in order to make this, uh, this project. I would say the most difficult part about making this project would be to cut down on all the information I had. Um, if I had put everything that I wanted to into this project, the video would end up being 15 minutes, but now it's about six and a half minutes. And so just finding which was the most important to put in. Mm -hmm. um, what was some surprise things that you discovered when you were making the video? Um, no surprises, it was perfectly planned. <laughs> not really, I mean, I know her so well. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, what did you learn about uh, TV journalism in this process? I learned that it can be kind of difficult to create B-roll mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and get enough of it. Um, while editing, I kind of had to be creative with it, like um, use key framing to get kind of different angles and shots, so yeah. Uh, how has what you've learned here at Skyview helped you in what your future career is going to be and what are you going to do next? Next I plan on going to Evergreen State. I might transfer to another college, but we'll see. Um, as for the big future, I don't know what yet, but I definitely want to be in the film industry, whether, whether that be journalism or um, narrative um, or maybe editing. I really enjoy editing and writing, so I'm just going to college to see what I want to do and where I fit in best. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Our next film comes from Fort Vancouver High School, where a student combines his love for film and music. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice job, Andrew. Our next two films were made here at Skyview, and they're both about pursuing your dreams. Where's mom and dad? Work. Uh, what are you gonna do? Is that all you're gonna do all day? Just sit there and watch TV? Much. Come get your mail. Here's some college letters for you. Okay. <sighs> Look here, Coco. You're a senior in high school and you're running out of time. Graduation is only a few months away. You're gonna have to decide on what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Oh, shoot. I have to go and meet somebody. So, uh, see you later. Okay. Yeah, look. Look, she's she talks to him low. Like, it's irritating either way. Like, Sorry guys, I'm a little late. That's all good. Yeah, no worries. I actually have to get going to though because I have a college interview. Which one? You. Oh, nice. At least you know what you're doing after high school. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I mean, you're really good at cooking, so you should go to culinary school. Nah, it's too expensive. I don't think my parents can afford the $100,000. I should figure out how to make money. Oh, since you're in video production, wanna do a cooking show with me? That sounds like one. Would you like to join? Uh, what day? Um, I'm free this Sunday. I already have plans. So, have you figured out what you wanted to make for your first video? Not yet. Okay, um, do you remember the last time I was over and you made the fried chicken? Oh, you mean the karaage? Yeah, that was really good. I think that'd be a good way to start off your cooking show. All right, let's do that. Okay, is the oil ready? Yeah. Okay, then let's start. Okay, here we go. Welcome to my cooking show. So today we're gonna be making some karaage and I'm gonna list the ingredients before we start. So here we have some potato starch, some ginger, some garlic, some canola oil, some sake, and then we also have the chicken thigh. Yeah, it looks funny. So, did you enjoy this? Yeah, I had a, a lot of fun. We should do this again. I mean, the chicken looks really good. Do you mind if I took one? Sure. Sure? Oh. Mm. So how does the video look? The video looks pretty good. Would you like to take a look? Sure. Welcome to my cooking show. So, um, I was playing around with it. Um, earlier, and I thought you needed a theme song, and this is what I came up with. Welcome to my cooking show. Welcome to my cooking show. Welcome to my cooking show. Welcome Stop. <laughs> Isn't it really catchy? Welcome to my cooking show. 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 Welcome. So I uploaded the video online, and you seem to be getting a lot of positive feedback. I think we should pursue this. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, if we're gonna do that, let's start planning now. Okay, so what do you think we should name the show then? Cooking with the K. I like that. Okay, Coco, we're ready for you. To another show of cooking with a K. So today we'll be making a takoyaki 
And here are the ingredients. Welcome to my cooking show. 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 And that's how you make takoyaki. Thank you for all the support that you guys have given me and my channel. Um, if you guys are wondering why I'm wearing a gown today, it's because I'm going to graduate in a few hours. Stay tuned for more Cooking with a K. Thanks and have a great day. <gasps> Welcome to my cooking show. Welcome to my cooking show. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, yeah, they had the book in stock. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Love you. Bye. Welcome to A7.2, The Club. Hey, all you young writers. Did you hear what Corbine Blog is doing? They're going to be having a weekly writing contest for you exclusively. You'll have 15 minutes to write based off a prompt. Show up to the Corbine Blog office for the chance to be the first one to be featured. Big day tomorrow. Take a seat. Please state your name and age. Aiden Carter, 17. Is that with an Y or an I? With a Y. Thanks, Aiden. Grab a piece of paper and you have 15 minutes to write. Your prompt is reckless. Good luck. Here I come feature. Two minutes left. No, 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 I need more time. Come on, come on. Time's up. I... I didn't finish. Fifteen minutes goes by a lot quicker than I thought. Well, there's always next week. Welcome to Corbine Blog. Please state your name and age. Aiden Carter, 17. Ah, welcome back, Aiden. Same rules as last time, you got 15 minutes. Your theme this time, though, is going to be departure. Go. Time's up. No, not again. Unfinished. Time's up. Time's up. And your time is up. Oh, I can't believe it. Time's up. Beep, beep, beep. It's, oh, it's just so... I can't... No, I, I quit. I quit? Hey guys, it's Richie from 87.2, The Club. Corbin Blog is ending their Young Writers program. The last competition is this week. Don't forget to show up for your last chance to be featured. State your name and age. Aiden Carter, 17. Huh, long time no see Aiden. Yeah, I guess so. 
All right, well, uh, 15 minutes. Your theme is time. Time, something some of us don't have enough of. You know you still have like five minutes, right? No need. I've written what I've wanted to write. Remember last week when we thought Corvine Blog was out of time? Well, their last entry just had huge success thanks to Aiden Carter, age 17. They will continue their Young Writers program for the foreseeable future. Our final film also comes from Fort. These students played around with light to make a suspenseful horror film. Jennifer, I told you I can't go to the party tomorrow. But it'd be so fun. I know, but I got... I have work. You always work, Tristan. I, I just can't. I was just looking forward to it. Well, I don't know. I gotta go, okay? Just, I'll talk to you later. This phone hasn't rang in years. Hello? Nobody's there. Hey, Jennifer. Turns out I need a break from work. I'll see you at the party. Bye. That's it for us. Thanks for watching the Young Filmmakers Project. Until next time, I'm Tara Cox.